Um, Stanford's a really good team. Um, they're big inside. They have two dominant post players um, that really just like impact the game and some good shooters. I think Hannah Jump was a load for us in the first half. Um, but they're really good. They have a lot of weapons and um, they're just a really good team. So tough game for us. But I'm proud of our fight. I'm proud that we didn't give up. Um, we fought for 40 minutes. Um, it was hard to have an answer. We switched the zone. They score. We or offensive rebound. We tried pretty much every type of defense. Um, it wasn't too successful <coughs> Successful at times. But every time we kind of tried to make a run, they kind of you know, scored or got something good to happen for them. Jay, what are you going to remember about playing against and coaching against Tara right here? Uh, oh, yeah. You know, it's so funny. I forgot that it's our – well, it's not going to be – I'm confident it's not my last time playing against Stanford here, so I think that's probably why I don't even think about that. Um, you know, she's a pioneer for our game. She is a uh, just icon of basketball, and not only women's basketball. Um, I think of the things that I respect about her. I remember they were so good even when I played, so she's been good for a really long time. <laughs> um, that's what we all hope to do. But when I was a player here, I think we beat Stanford one time. Um, and then, you know, having, seeing her on the sidelines as a coach and then coaching against her is just kind of, it's different, um, but she's a great coach. Uh, the things that I respect is how she has evolved with the game. Um, I think you see a lot of older coaches, like the super experienced coaches, they don't do that, but she's changed and had success throughout the years for three decades. And to be at the same institution with so much success is extremely hard. Um, she's a great basketball mind. You can tell she studies and and changes as the game changes. And the other thing I love about her is when I first got into coaching, so I'm in my eighth year as a head coach my first year, she would talk to me, give me advice, and wanted us to be good and wanted me to be successful as a woman um, coaching. And she always would give pour into me, give me advice. She was always someone I could call. It was never about Stanford or their success. It was always about women's basketball. I remember her at all the Pac-12 meetings she would give good insight, but it was never about Stanford. It wasn't like, here's the insight to position me to be successful. It was always about what was good for the league. And if that didn't benefit Stanford, she still suggested it. So I really respected that. You know, some people just talk and she talks, you listen, because it's always about growing our game. And uh, I just respect her so much. And uh, she's a great coach. What's a piece of advice that has stuck with you? <laughs> I, there's one particular thing. Well, there's a lot of things, but... Um, one thing, I think I did something stupid on Twitter one time because I was, you know, it was like some heat thing. And then I remember she said, uh, well, I knew when I get a, a couple phone calls, I got a call from Don and I got a call from her. I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, um, I, it was like, don't get your, um, don't get your skirt in the mud or something. It was something like that stuck with me. And, um, it was like, oh yeah, she's so right. You know, that I, I think I ended up apologizing for something that wasn't even my fault. I just kind of was a bigger person, but she's also given me other advice. I'm not going to share that was constructive and true. And I did listen and I did like modify something and it wasn't on social media. It was like a, it was something specific and I just respect her. I've also called her about some scheduling stuff and I always knew that I was going to get the truth out of her and it wasn't going to be like to benefit them. I'm talking about when we were like kind of combating with them when we went to championship with them. Um, so yeah, just, you know, people, we need more people like her in our game and more to get back and really care about like the women's women's game. So a lot of respect for her. Courtney tonight, um, her confidence, what are you seeing in her? Is it just more playing time and being able to work through mistakes or is she different for other reasons? I think she's playing with a tremendous amount of confidence right now. Also, she's getting the opportunities. Um, and I think when you know you have more opportunities, I think you can play a little bit looser. And I had a talk with her on Thursday, like a one-on-one -on -one talk with her. I just happened to see her on the way to Mikhail and I drove her to class. I was like, hey, you want to ride? Because she's like, yeah, you know, she's going across campus. And I just had like a five or 10 minute talk with her and I told her some things and she really applied them and played like a different player on Friday. And I just, you know, explained to her that like come in and just be solid. You don't have to come in and like score a three or, um, or get a steal, come in and be solid and then like let the game come. And I explained that it's hard if you come in right away and like it's a turnover. Then it's, these are one possession games. We lost like those four games in a row off like one point. For two points so just explaining the importance of that and she's really done that she's been more solid not turning the ball over and doing the little things and getting into the game and i said when you do those things we play you more like i it, i can leave you in the game but when it's like you come in it's a seven point swing it's warm where you're going to come out 
And I told her how many minutes we need her to play. And I told her at that time, we need to play 20 minutes. And I think that gave her just a little bit of confidence. And I think sometimes those little things that you instill in players, like they can kind of take a deep breath and decompress and start over. And she's done that. And she's actually applied the things that I've told her specifically. And that's not easy to do. And I also understand as a player, it's very hard when you're in a backup role and you go in to make a mistake to pull out. It's very hard to play like that. And I talked to her about that. And, and, and I've been in those situations, so I understood that. But she's applied what I've asked, and she's done it, and she's doing a really good job. So career high for Courtney. I mean, 32 minutes and 24 points. And, I mean, like an assist, four steals. I mean, she did a really good job. And some big threes and two for three from the three. That's a great, great performance. Her and Sky were great. And, I mean, we're seven players. That's the name of a lot of foul trouble. Um, not easy. And seven players in our post are battling against two pretty much all Americans in the post. So it's, it was, it's hard, but it is what it is. Tell me a little bit about your mindset when three of your posts all of a sudden were in such horrible foul trouble. I know. You had to go smaller. Um, what did you talk to your team about? How did you keep them together? Well, I just talked about um, just like minimizing the small things. So let's say we get a foul early. Then you don't go for like the moving screen. You don't move on the screen or you don't take the risk with those plays because, or the, you don't reach in that situation. Like, especially if you have two and the third one's going to make you sit. Just explaining that, like, like for ISIS, ISIS, I didn't mind that help side where she tried to take a charge and, or a, a box out foul because it's the effort of making the play. I don't mind those things, but those are okay. But you, then you can't go for the reach or the reach in on the, when someone else is driving or, or the full court press getting a foul then, like those kind of things. So just understanding that. But I thought they all played so hard and they're trying. They're trying their best. So like, what do you do? It's like, I, I can't like, we've tried and get, played our hearts for 40 minutes. Like the thing is, as a coach, you want your players to give their hearts. You want them to fight. You want them to not lose confidence. And we're doing all those things. So I can't really ask for anything. I can, I can show film and minimize some mistakes. But like, I don't know what else I can ask for. Helena was about to die. But she's like, you know, she's like gas. I sat her. I didn't put her back in because I know four minutes she's gassed. Um, so she clocked like six and a half miles on Friday. So I'm not risking getting her hurt. Like, you know, we were losing the game and that, that is what it is. And those are the decisions I have to make. Um, but they're playing hard. They're trying. Maybe some shots didn't fall, but I don't know what else they can do physically. And we have seven players, unfortunately. And that is what it is. You mentioned Helena. She wasn't able to get much going uh, offensively with scoring, but... She was able to get seven assists. You talk about her versatility as a player. Yeah, Helena impacts, impacts the game when she's not scoring. She is very hard to keep off the floor. And, like, this is low for Helena. 32 minutes is low because she sat the last four. I mean, I need her to play 38, 39 minutes. But, like, I saw her super fatigue. And so I, I did not because um, I'm not going to – for me, it's I'd rather lose game and risk an injury. That's to be honest. Even if it was a closer game, if I, if I see – no, she's diabetic too. So if I see the look in her eyes, she looks a little low, I'm, I'm taking her out. And if that means we lose, we lose. I mean, I'm more concerned about her health. Um, and that's like, that's just where, we at, where we're at. And it's not the national championship. If it was, I would just call more timeouts, get her shook. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not that. So, um, but she's playing good. I mean, you look, she played 33 minutes today, 38, no, 39, 23, or 39, 49, I think. She, like all about 20 seconds a game, I think it was maybe a little like 39, 50, whatever on Friday. It's a quick turnaround. That's, that's not easy. And so um, like they're giving me their all. I mean, Brea would have played more, but Brea was in foul trouble. Like she would have played more minutes. We needed her to play more, but then it forces Mary. And so that forced Helena to go to the four. So that's kind of because of their fouls. Cause we need the post. Brea needs to play 25, 27 minutes. Is Mary needs to play 25, 27. And Isis needs to play. She played 26. She could probably play a little bit more. So we just have to play a little bit smarter. Go, 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 mm -hmm. middle of the game, the nine out of the middle of the time yeah. for the Arizona State game. How important is that time to kind of let the players rest, but then also maybe get healthy with the game? Yeah, um, well, Caitlin's not out. She's not, yeah, she's she's just not available right now. Um, so Caitlin hopefully can come back. Um, you know, she warmed up on Friday, and then we I decided not to play her Friday, and then today, um, she didn't go at all. So we'll see next week, but we'll get two days off next week. So I think the mental part of the game and physically to get rest and recuperate, but they're not in a bad mental state. We did get our butts kicked and we got stomped, but they're not um, defeated. 
they're not, I think they recognize that San Francisco is a little better right now, um, but they're not hanging their head. They're like, we're going to go back there. They don't care. They care about losing. They're mad, but they also know they fought hard and they know we have seven people. And we're, just, we're doing our best. Um, and can we get better at little things? Can we minimize? Can we box out a little bit better? Absolutely. Um, but they're trying and they're fighting. So right now, I think we really need to win the games we're supposed to. Like, you know, we have a really big game at, at home. We knew on the stretch we wanted to try to win two out of three. Like, and then we want to try to go steal some on the road, but we really want to try to win games at home. And this is that three-game stretch where it's, there's a possibility of doing that. And I think that um, that's realistic, and that's, I think they feel good about that. But we also know every game is a battle. And, and, like, you know, Cal just lost to ASU. ASU is playing much better than when we faced them. They're a good team. So every game's tough, and it is what it is. But I think it's going to be fun to play at home again before we hit the road and play two top five teams. Um, nothing easy in the Pac-12, unfortunately. So it would be the hardest year of the league, the year that we have seven players, because we're probably going to have seven players for a while and possibly the rest of the season. Talking about some of the positives, you've turned them over 16 times, and of those were steals. Um, you got to the line 23 times being aggressive, driving. So those things, how did they, um, how did they feed into the confidence, seeing those good things that you're yeah, they were good. It's just we missed a lot of those free throws. So, like, we got there and, like, we just missed them. Like, and we've been really good on free throws. So, that was tough. We needed to make those, but that wasn't the difference in the game. Um, I think that we made good plays. That Like, we had some great um, steals in, like, our full court press. But then when we made a mistake, it's a three. That, like, that's what the difference is with, like, really good teams. Like, they can be in the Final Four again. Um, I mean, Cameron is hard to guard. Kiki is really good. She, like, probably one of the strongest inside with quick hops. So they're a load inside. I mean, coming into this game, they're 35 points, 22 rebounds. Like we gave them 45 and 20, 48 and 26, I think, unfortunately. Um, I got another last time we gave 96 points at home in my tenure here. I don't, I don't even think ever. I think this is the first time ever, unfortunately. Um, but there are positive things. We did some things. Um, you know, we made some plays, but every time there was a mistake, we paid and they scored every single time miss rotation score so that's what good teams do they exploit you we had a tough time they when we went small they switched one through four we couldn't get anything going and we couldn't get to the backside. um so we have to work on things if if on on balls someone's going to go under twice which is very hard to do we have to make a 10 footer that's just what you have to do because then you make someone have a counter like they make you have counters if you go under on them they're going to shoot behind the screen if you go over they're going to cut for layups and then it makes our post player help and it gives them easy catches at the elbow. So they make you pay in the counter. So we have to get better to do that. And that's what, when we are a top five team, that's what we do. We make people really adjust to our stuff. And right now that was hard to do with them. We were, we were adjusting, adjusting, adjusting and kept on adjusting um, like about 10 times. Um, in the good teams, they adjust to your adjusting and score. So then you got to readjust. And that's what good coaches do. And Tara is a phenomenal coach. She's won 1,100 more games than me. But, uh, <laughs> which is a lot, but, um, but it's, it's just the process. And what this does is our freshmen are learning. They're playing and seeing what a top five team is. They see, we almost beat a top five team in Colorado and then we beat one. So they're getting these things where it pays off the next year. This happened three years ago before the national championship. We lost all the close games. Um, we weren't great, but then the next year we won those games. So I'm hoping the progress is, Next year, when those, but I know our team is united. I know our team has each other's backs. I know they're cohesive, that group of seven, and I'm going to build off that, and we're going to be better. You talked about, you know, before the national championship, and when you guys went to the WNIT, it was kind of that building year. Yeah. Do you ever have thoughts that maybe that secondary tournament would be good for this team rather than the big one? Yeah. Um, I think it's so hard when like you've been to the national championship i think it's like the bar is high and there's no pressure like dave was a great ad and like we had a great he never said oh you need to make final four i don't i don't ever feel that pressure right now he knows i he like i know he's not the ad right now but he knew i was building and he knew we were going to take a step back so i never felt that pressure oh you have to be back in the final four but i know that for me like i'm not coaching to not do that so i'm not like that's i'm going to find a way to get us better and back to where we should be um but I knew this year we would take a step back. We have seven players. So when I, I do think about that, we're going to try to make a tournament. 
Um, and I think it's realistic right now. It's going to be hard. Absolutely. We'd probably be the talk of the country if we did it. But we're also in a really strong conference, and we don't have bad losses. I don't think we have one bad loss. Like, if you think about it, we don't have one loss. We're like, oh, <clears throat> we don't. And so I think that we need to win some games. There's nine games left. We need to we need to win the majority of them. Is it hard? Yeah. But is it possible? Yeah. It, I also look back when we won the NIT, no one thought we would. When we went to the national championship, no one thought we would. Um, we weren't even chosen at all. We weren't even in the talk. And then when we at Washington, when we went to the national, when we went to the, the final four, we weren't. We were finished fifth in the Pac-12, and the Pac-12 wasn't nearly what it is today. So I think there's just you just gotta you have to get hot at the right time. Your team has to believe. You have to get your girls playing hard, and we're doing those things. But we just have to get better at some small things. And we're gonna have this short bench. It's not changing. Um, I don't think we're gonna find like five stud players where I can add. There could be. I might have open trials too, but um, I don't think that that's the answer right now. I think we just go with who we have, and I love this team, and I love this group, and I love what they're doing and how they are believing. And so I just have to build off that and figure out ways for us to try to get wins. Yeah. To be clear, Kaylin is not sitting out due to health-related issues? She's not available right now. So, But that's TBD for the next game. <laughs>